everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are going to talk about plastic. I talk about trash and waste and plastic and a lot of other stuff that's related to environmentalism and sustainability here on my channel. But whenever I do research for my videos, so whenever I'm out giving lectures or talking to people, some of the things that I realize very, very quickly is that there's a lot of misconceptions and misinformation about plastic, about recycling and about the general state of the planet. So I thought I wanted to make at least a few things a little bit more clear, a little bit easier to understand. Also because I personally find it so difficult to navigate in all of the information that's presented to us. Whenever you type into Google, what the heck is pollution? Why is our planet bad? you will be very very easily misled by companies who actually profit from that pollution you're trying to investigate. So I thought this would be a good video to make. If you have any other things that you've heard, misinformation and stuff that sort of surprised you, leave a comment down below and let me know that as well. As well. Then we will make this a kind of series, I guess. Let's do that. Okay, first one. Let's go. The first myth that I've heard countless times is that plastic is okay as long as it can be recycled. And that speaks to an idea or like a perception of recycling where plastic is incorporated into recycling in a continuous closed loop. But actually plastic can only be recycled about one to three times. And you have to add new plastic to it because plastic degrades in quality and can actually only be downsized. You need to add new plastic in order for the quality to stay equal to the product it was before. So even though recycling is a great way to start, it's a bad place to stop because it does not actually solve our plastic problem. Also, the global recycling rate for plastic is only at about 12 to 15 percent. It differs from country to country, but as we are not doing enough, it also speaks to an actual practice that is not necessarily as simple as just recycling. It's really, really difficult because plastic is made up of tons of different components and can be mixed and match all together. So yeah, the bottom line is plastic is not good as long as it's just recycled because it cannot be recycled indefinitely. Another myth or at least some sort of misperception about plastic and about recycling is that a lot of different symbols make the plastic better because it's recycled or of its recycled qualities. And this symbol, for instance, this one, is to a lot of consumers equal to this plastic packaging is made from recycled plastic. But it's actually not. This symbol means that the company that made the plastic packaging has in some financial way contributed to a recycling system or a recycling option. It has nothing to do with whether or not the plastic is actually recycled. And also we just established that plastic recycling is inefficient by itself. So this symbol means nothing. When we talk about microplastic, one of the really, really big things we always tend to talk about are skin products, care products, beauty products, because they contain microplastic and that microplastic leaks into our waterways whenever we flush it or wash it down our drains. And that's a giant problem. A normal piece of exfoliant cream, for instance, that contains microplastic will release between 5,000 and 90,000 small microscopic microbeads made of plastic into our waterways and into our oceans. But that's actually quite a small number for a bigger product. There are a lot of other ways in which microplastic can leak and re be released into our waterways and into our oceans. A lot of synthetic clothes actually is one of the reasons why, and car tires as well. So even though it's really, really good to boycott products that contain microplastic like toothpaste, exfoliant, skin creams, rubs, scrubs, all these sort of care products, beauty products, it's a really good way to boycott them. They're garbage, we don't need them. But we also need to look at a lot of other things. Every time something is made of plastic, every time something is synthetic, it will release microplastic into our waterways. A big myth I hear a lot is that plastic pollution is the biggest threat to our oceans. And sadly, it's not. Our oceans are in a very delicate state right now and a lot of stuff is happening and a lot of it is really, really terrifying. And removing just plastic from the oceans will not fix half our problems. Nanoparticles from sunscreen is affecting coral reefs in a really devastating way in very heavily touristed areas. And global warming is warming up the water which also affects these very, very fragile ecosystems. The fishing industry 
which is also responsible for the vast majority of plastic pollution in our oceans because of ghost gear and fishnets is overfishing and once plentiful species are going extinct because of the fishing industry. We also have ocean acidification due to increased CO2. We have dead zones and we have habitat destruction. In short, we need to do more than just refuse straws and plastic bags. We need to stop supporting the fishing industry. We need to wear reef safe sunscreens whenever we leave the beach and go into the oceans. And we need to shift from a fossil fuel based energy to green energy. All of these things will help the planet tremendously. And of course, plastic and refusing plastic is an essential part of that as well. But nothing can become a green alibi. You cannot just refuse plastic straws and plastic bags and then you're all a-okay. We need to do more than that to protect our planet. This one is something that I also hear all the time. And I guess it's a product of greenwashing. But we are talking about biodegradable plastic as though it's way better than normal plastic. And oh boy, uh. because one of the bigger misconceptions here is that biodegradable means compostable, which it does not. You cannot take your biodegradable plant-based plastic cutlery from your picnic and put it in your garden compost. It will not decompose. Just as if you leave it out in nature, it will take the exact same time to break down as normal plastic because it behaves completely the same way. You can compost biodegradable plastic if you have access to an industrial high heat compost facility, but you cannot do it on your own. Biodegradable plastic is actually often made from a mix of oil-based plastic and plant-based plastic. And because that is a mix, a lot of recycling facilities does not accept it as a viable material. So often it ends up in landfill or it ends up being burned in incinerators. On the upside, biodegradable plastic actually emits less CO2 and methane when it's produced, but the advantages also kind of stop just right there. Right now we're seeing a lot of biodegradable plastic bags and biodegradable single-use cutlery and plates and whatnot. And the biodegradable plastic material has sort of taken over from normal plastic and it has become a convenient product. And in my opinion, and in all the resources I also have linked in my description, if you're interested in reading any of this yourself, there's absolutely no way that you can make a sustainable single-use product. Ta-da! A reusable product is always better than a single-use product. That's just how it is, yo. So what is the purpose of this video? Is it just to make everyone feel super, super sad and bad about all of their life decisions? Of course not. The purpose of this video is first and foremost to say that plastic is not a problem. Plastic is a symptom of the problem. The problem goes a lot deeper. It has, something to, it has everything to do with our consumerist culture and our convenience culture. As soon as we let that slip away, it becomes way easier dealing with these solutions. And I just want everyone to be as informed and conscious, I guess, when we are making decisions. So we are all equally equipped when we want to find the best solution. And a really good way of doing that is by sharing knowledge. In today's landscape and the way we talk about sustainability, doing one single little thing often becomes a green alibi. Refusing a straw will suddenly make you a hero on the news and obviously every small step is important and I do sincerely believe that everything starts out small, everything has to have a beginning. But we cannot pat ourselves on the back as soon as we do one tiny little thing, we need to keep going and we need to do more. And we need to demand that companies and governments do more because it's also kind of their responsibility, I mean I'm not gonna lie, it, it is. And when I search on Google or wherever about plastic pollution, one of the first sites, five of the first sites that come up are from Bioplastics Europe, plastic manufacturers and people that have very clear interests in not having plastic be out face, which is just intensely, intensely worrying. So yeah, now you know and I hope you will do something with this video, you can share it with your friends or give it a like. We need to think positive thoughts though and it's very easy to, to glide into this hall of sadness when it comes to sustainability and the, the state of our planet and the decay of everything. But 
there's so much good stuff here and I really hope that that is what you'll take away from this video as well. There's so much good stuff you guys and if you're interested in any of my other tips, I was talking about nanoparticles and sunscreen and I actually have a video guide about that on how to avoid it, tons of other stuff, recycling things, zero waste living, all my videos are on my channel and you can go absolutely nuts. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope I wasn't too, like, I don't know, preachy or angry. Sometimes it's really easy to get angry, you guys. But it's all from a place of love. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.